Hey everyone, we are finally back with another video regarding making game projects in Scorpion Engine. And with me is Eric Hogan, the creator of Scorpion Engine. Say hi to everyone, Eric. Hello everyone. And quickly show you and everyone else the progress I've made most recently in the game to kind of tease people as to what they'll see in the upcoming video when we kind of review what I've done and how it was done. And this is still working in a stock Amiga 500 with 1 meg of total RAM. So it's going to take a while to load because it's, I think, emulating the uh, Amiga 500 uh, disk drive speed. I've not sped that up yet in the emulator. There we go. So I've uh, optimized the tile set more. I've also raised up the background and fixed the little stray pixel in the back parallax here. I removed the uh, moving platform from this beginning part because it was unnecessary. Uh, and you don't want to kind of introduce everything all at once in a game. You know what I mean? You kind of pace it out. Mm. You don't want to... Yep. A bit like Lemmings where every level has a little bit more than the last one. Exactly. So now there's a bigger uh, hole there with a bit better reason for there to be a platform. And uh, if you guys have not seen it yet, not only can I bounce off the enemies, but if I hold down an attack, I can do a downward uh, sword uh, kind of pogo stick, like a ducktails attack. And if I miss an enemy, it gets stuck in the ground and the player takes a second to pull it out of the ground so you're vulnerable at that point. Uh, but the real new thing is, if you look at the upper left, there is now a still placeholder weapon icon. Now, just like in the Castlevania games, if I hold attack, uh, hold up and press attack, I throw a boomerang weapon in this case, and it'll come back to me no matter what I'm doing. So it's, uh, very nice. You can see that. And then if I press space or the left shoulder button on a CD32 controller, it switches weapons. And now if I hold up and press attack, I throw a little bomb that uh, can also destroy enemies. So I'm use this guy to get up here. So you can see now this flying enemy, which is pretty fun. Let's see here. Um, so if you get under him, he does this uh, downward attack that spreads out on the ground and you can jump it. Uh, but the cool thing is if you time it well, let's see, there, you can bounce the shot back up at him and actually hit him. It requires very careful timing. And being, <laughs> being in the spot where he's not moving much himself, oops. Luckily, I can't die yet. I haven't programmed that part, so even if I lose. There we go. So I killed him that way. Nice. Uh, and then get back up here. I saw some pots to break the crap. So that's what we've got added so far. So that's how it's going. So now the important thing is uh, in this video, we're going to sort of simultaneously protect the project from any kind of dying hard drive or house fire that destroys my computer or anything like that and simultaneously make it able to share the project with Eric so he can work on the project when he wants to as well. So to do that we're going to get it up on GitHub. Eric is going to guide me because Alex Brown the programmer Metrices walked me through that a couple of years ago. So let me get back to that website. All right, so I just go to github.com. You will obviously need an account, which is free. So that'll be your first step if you don't have an account yet. And then once you do have an account and log in, you'll be at some kind of generic page to get started. Okay, do you want to walk me through how I would create a project? I guess that's what it's called, yep. right, Eric? Uh, it's generally called a repository, but hmm. same difference. Okay. Where it says recent repositories up at the top left, you should be able to click that new button to create a new one. There it is, new. Okay, so you want to give it a unique name. Okay, the game doesn't have a name yet, though, so what are we going to call this? We'll call it Scorpion Boy for now. Sounds good to me. All right. 
No, I think the next setting is the most important one. So public basically means that it's an open source project where anyone can see it and download it. Yeah. Uh, if we want to keep it private for now, so it's only yeah. the people collaborating on it can see it mm -hmm. and uh, download it, then we'll go with private. Right. We don't need to add a README file. A README is really just for if you're making an open source project and you want other people to know what it's about, you can add a README. The git ignore is something we don't really need to set for this project either. So what, what a git ignore is, is it's a file that specifies what files and folders shouldn't be added to the repository. So as an example, Unity creates a lot of temporary files. So if you're creating a Unity project, you want to select the Unity git ignore because otherwise you'll end up with all of these temporary files right. in the repository yeah, history forever yeah. and ever there is no git ignore for scorpion and it doesn't tend to create that many sort of junk temporary files anyway so right. we don't need to set a git ignore so if we were making this public source we might want to consider something like gpl or the bsd license but uh, none is fine for a private repository Right, okay, and now I assume I should just click yep. Create Repository. Okay. So that gives us an empty project. If you go to Settings... Oh, yeah, the yep. rightmost one. Yep. So if you see under Access These Collaborators... There top, we go, yep, okay. So from here, this is where you can invite people to access your repository to make changes if you're working yep. in a team... I believe with a free account, there's a certain limit to the number of people you can add. Right. Unless you had a public repository, in which case anyone in the world can edit. Right. Or you could give anyone in the world access to edit your repository. I guess we might as well go ahead and do it. From, so if you just type add to repository. So it says awaiting my response. So if I, um, I've got an email at my side, I'm going to accept the invitation so now i'm in the repository uh if you refresh that page you should see i have accepted the invite nice collaborator and so i can download that repository anytime i wish excellent so now i need to somehow sync this with a local folder right yes so this is where we go to github desktop all right okay yep so from file file we we'll want to go to clone repository okay, clone because uh, it already exists. So we want to make a clone of it on our computer. Right. Um, and you can see you've got um, Scorpion Boy on the list. So you yeah. should be able to click on that. Yep. Yep. Now set a path for it or even that path will be fine. Just one thing to note is that you shouldn't set the path to the existing folder for the game. What we'll okay. do is we'll make it a new folder and then the we'll copy all the files into it. Okay. All right. So I think that is absolutely fine. Yep. The D drive is where I would actually want it to be. So click clone. Clone. And then it's just a matter of me moving the entire project folder into that folder. I suppose I should just copy all the files and folders in that folder directly into this. Oh, and I might as well close the Scorpion engine. Yep. Yep. Some of the times when I put a Scorpion project on GitHub, I put the main root Scorpion folder at the root of the repository. Sometimes I don't, because sometimes I like to have folders with like art resources and things that are not part of the main project, but are like references or uh, things that I can add later. So this is the actual folder. Yep. With all the stuff. So I'm just going to control A, control C, and then I'm going to navigate to D GitHub. Scorpion Boy. And I, I assume it doesn't go in that little Git folder. Ignore the dot .git. The dot okay. .git folder contains the database gotcha. that records all of the changes made. Gotcha. So that it's basically so that if you're working offline, you can revert back to a specific version you don't need to be connected to the live repository to have your entire revert history right right that makes sense okay so now i assume if i go back here uh, i get up yep. desktop we'll have found a ton yeah we'll have found a ton of files yep uh, and now i'm just going to say committing mm. 
Game. So a, a commit is a snapshot of the project uh, or a snapshot of files in the project at a certain point in time. Mm -hmm. It's important to remember that a commit is a local operation. So it's still saving it to your hard drive. Right. It hasn't, it has taken the local snapshot, but it hasn't shared it to everyone else yet. Okay. So commit is the local right. operation. Push is the remote operation. Gotcha. Cannot publish unborn head. That sounds incredibly weird. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it says publish branch. I think it's just because we've never published before. So we'll do that publish branch now. Uh, yep. Okay. There we go. Okay. So now that it's done, um, you don't have any changes to commit or to push yet right. the button you just clicked where it says fetch origin that does a sync operation so it downloads any changes that other people have pushed and it pushes all of the changes that you've got on your hard drive but you haven't synchronized yet right so that's really important if you're working with a team and you know or think maybe another team member has done some work then before you start working up on the project it's a good idea to open up in this case github desktop especially if there are multiple people that might be working on the same exact code blocks or artwork or whatever just always make sure you develop that habit of checking before you work on something because you would hate to when working on a project with multiple people accidentally undo the work of other people. I know there's some complicated ways you can kind of try to merge the work of multiple people, but I assume that can mm. only do so much and can get really messy. Yeah, absolutely. So most of Scorpion, like with code blocks and such, it's in plain text so that at least in theory, if one person makes some changes and another person makes some changes to the same block of code, they should be able to merge them as long as the code doesn't contradict each other. Right. But things like graphics files, like PNGs, you definitely yeah. can't merge the changes <laughs> one person's made with the right. changes someone else has made. Right. And obviously the whole thing about this and the reason to use GitHub, over the decades I've been in different communities like with Multimedia Fusion and Construct, maybe once a year, maybe once every two years, you'll see this horrifying post by someone, please help, I've been working on a game for a year and my hard drive burnt out or the file, the project file got corrupted and it's zero K and I, you know, what can I do? I can't. And if they don't have it backed up anywhere, there's nothing they can do most of the Absolutely. time. So. I, I do remember reading horror stories from back in the day where one Amiga game from a notable developer was just lost completely because oh, a hard drive yes. died. And of course, hard drives were quite expensive in those mm. days, so it wasn't as easy to just have a backup. Right. You need to have your stuff backed up and especially useful to have version control where you can revert back. If there's a bug or some kind of corruption or something, you can revert back to your project that you basically committed it at any given date, which can be also extremely useful. But definitely when you're getting into that stuff, look up videos and stuff like that. Same thing when you install GitHub Desktop and you need to learn how to log in the first time and connect it to your account. I'm sure there are videos for that. I assume now, Eric, if you open up whatever GitHub thing you use, you should get some kind of notification that files have been committed. Or if you do the fetch origin thing, you should be able to get all of those files mm. and then run and edit the game on your side of things. So that was pretty much all that this video was meant to do. That will be it for this video. Thanks everyone for watching and we'll be back sometime soon where we'll actually go through and show you how I added all those new features to the game.